Go to a live and ask if you want. Hello um, and good morning. Uh, this is a real pleasure for me to open this session uh, where we have two great experts who are going to tell us about how to advance our practice in ESD. So it's my real pleasure to invite Professor Yamamoto uh, from Chichi University. Professor Yamamoto, hi. Hi. Uh, I don't think you need any introduction to the world because the whole world knows you about double balloon enteroscopy and ESD. We associate you with these two great techniques. So everybody knows. Uh, there are a few things that people don't know, but I do know. Uh, back in 2004, when I visited you in Jiti, I saw you doing ESD with a very long needle knife and that I too in duodenum. And I was shocked. I thought, God, this man, how can he do ESD with a long needle knife in duodenum? <laughs> so since then, things have evolved and you've developed various knives. You evolved various new techniques of ESD. So it will be really great pleasure for us to hear from you. I also found out recently that a long time ago in 90s, you spent quite a bit of time in US to broaden your horizon. But I guess you realize there's nothing else West can contribute to you. So you went back to Jiji and settled down in Jiji. <laughs> so uh, I, I can see why you would do that. So it's a real pleasure to have you with us today to talk about ESD. I uh, also have a great pleasure in inviting uh, uh, Dr. Hayashi, who also works with you. And I guess from last 20 years, he's been based in Jiji, learning all the tricks and trades of ESD, as well as double balloon endroscopy. So he will give us an interesting insight into the technique of ESD. So let's get going, guys. And uh, maybe we start with Dr. Hayashi's lecture first. So welcome, Dr. Uh, Hayashi. Uh, thank you. So thank you for kind introduction. So uh, I'll start my lecture. So uh, please start my video. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I would like to talk about the evolving pocket creation method for colorectal ESD today. In order to achieve a cure of colorectal cancer, both complete local excision of the tumor and complete control of metastasis are required. However, NSPIC treatment cannot control metastatic disease. Therefore, accurate assessment of risk of lymph node metastasis is required when we consider the indications for NSPIC resection. Interim causal GI tumors do not have any risk of lymph node metastasis. On the other hand, invasive cancers need consideration of lymph node resection according to the risk of lymph node metastasis. The risk can be reliably estimated by examining these risk factors based on examination of a high quality pathological specimen. Two thin submucosal and two much burned submucosal are not good. By the way, how can we keep the margin? About the horizontal margin, we incise the mucosa looking at the tumor demarcation. On the other hand, the vertical margin should be just above the mass layer. Then, it's ideal to dissect the mucosa looking at the surface of the mass layer. The Einstein hut is an ideal device to keep visual dissection. The coin called Einstein hut can turn up the flap sooner and more reliably than the cylindrical cap. The Einstein hut provides both traction and counter traction. The traction can stretch the submucosal tissue like a surgeon's both hands. It allows the electric knife to cut the tissue with minimum thermal energy, which contributes to safe dissections and response placement. In my opinion, ideal way of ESD with the visual dissection is the pocket creation method, PCM. The PCM was originally developed to overcome large zero one lesions with severe submucosal fibrosis. When doing PCM of ESD, we should use a conical Einstein head 
and then need a type knife. After making a small initial mucosal incision, we dissect the mucosa laterally in visual, collapsing the intestinal lumen while searching the gas facilitates this procedure. After dissection of most of the tumor area, we should open the submucosal pocket from its lower side. The advantages of the PCM are as follows. Maintenance of a thick submucosal layer during a procedure. The endoscopic view to the Aston Hunt facilitates recognition of the muscularis. Quality pathological specimen with that take and respirant some goes away under the tumor. Keeping tangential approach in the pocket. When the pocket, synchronization of inspect tube with a fluctuation of breathing or a heartbeat. However, a weak point of PCM is that the more open the pocket is the more unstable the endoscope becomes. Eventually, we started to use SureClip as a traction device. This evolved PCM was named PCM using a single clip traction, PCM CT. I will introduce this technique. First, the submucosa below the region is dissected using the PCM. Next, a circumferential mucosal incision is created around the region. A system with a sure clip is used to grasp only normal mucosa on the distal edge of the partial resected region, but the clip is not deployed. The interrupted mucosa is pulled back a few centimeters and moved toward the opposite wall. After collapsing the intestinal lumen with satin gas, the opposite wall mucosa is also grasped with the clip. Next, after insufferation, we confirm if the grasping position is appropriate to provide good traction to the region. Then, we deploy. After that, the surface of mucosal dissection path becomes clear and remaining regional submucosa is dissected. I'll show you an example video of PCM CT. Rarely spreading tumor, non granular type, in the ascending column. First, we inject 0.4% sodium hyaluronate. Then, we dissect just below the tumor side mucosa to make the entrance bigger. Now we encountered submucosal fibrosis induced by previous biopsy in the local clinic. Though clinical ST can stretch the submucosa, then we can identify select a uh, correct dissection line. After creation of the pocket, we make a uh, circumferential incision. Then we grasp uh, distal side of the partially resected specimen, then pull back a few centimeters and uh, connect it to the opposite mucosa to provide traction. After that, we confirm if there is, if the traction is good for the region or not. Then all we have to do is to dissect the remaining submucosa like this. Then we finish. After dissection, we remove the clip using grasping forceps. We achieve R0 resection like this. Take home messages. PCM is an ideal way to obtain quality SD specimens. And PCM is evolving to easy PCM CT. Thank you for your attention. So thank you. That was a very good overview very quickly about the entire technique and how this has evolved into a new one. Uh, maybe we can see uh, uh, almost a virtual live case from Professor Yamamoto now and then have a discussion. So let's carry on with the uh, next case, please. Thank you. Thank you, Pradeep. Uh, I will show you a case of 
rectal, uh, rectal ESD, pocket creation method of ESD, that is a circumferential region in the uh, lower rectum. Okay, then please play the video. Circumferential laterally speaking tumor, granular type, in the rectum. This patient is a seventy year old woman, and a colonoscopy due to her hemiplegia. This region was revealed then. She has no comorbidities. Very weak laterally speaking tumor. Almost circumferential one. There is a very narrow upper normal mucosa. This ruler shows 2 cm in length. This right with the tumor is very close to the dented line. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Yuno Yamato from Bismarck University in Japan. Uh, today I will show you pocket creation methods of ESD in the rectal region. I want to introduce my team and my assistant today is Dr. Suda, Dr. Hayashi, and Dr. Ueno. And today is Mr. Kawata. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's start. Hmm. This is the colonoscope, uh, EC 760 GT, so position. This has the uh, LED light source. The is located very close to the end of the tunnel. This is an uh, and the granular type, you know. And this is the white light image. And change to LCR. This is the lateral spreading tumor, granular type. And almost circumferential region, just a little bit gap between the regions here. And I tend to BLI and with BLI mode, it's it easier to recognize the extent of the region. And I carefully examine the entire surface of the region and there are no area of uh, five ends uh, this button this drainage three area so the whole area five. so that's the this this is the recorder region the total neoplastic region so I think uh, this is a good indication for ESD. Today I will show you a pocket creation method. But this is the circumferential region, so I create two pockets and then connect it to two pockets and complete the procedure. I will create a pocket from here to about the house. This is light again, light yes. yes, I have to pay attention to the blood vessel uh, underneath the, the mucosa. Uh -huh. And we shouldn't stick the needle into the blood vessel. So carefully select the needle insertion point. And the initial bleeding makes the procedure very difficult. So you have to be careful. So, yes. 
Okay, how about we can focus on here, and here. So, and you take again here. Okay, then let's start cutting. Okay, let's start cutting in here. That's the shallow, shallow before the end, you
We were inside Scotchman Mukoda on the first Mukoda pocket now. We are using little flexion approach now. We are dissecting some mucosa just below the tumor side mucosa to make the incision bigger. Mm -hmm. We turn to anterograde approach to dissect some mucosa more. We can see the fruit more in the The connection to the oral side. We are making a connection bigger. We extend Rochinar Mukoda incision now. Doing deeper cut. We are confirming the creation of the first pocket. Now oh. we make circumferential proximal mucosal incision now. There is a large vessel. You set both sides first. Preview pre coagulation using pre coagulation mode. Also, the other side. Then we cut it with fake quadration. We start making the second pocket from the eastern side of the region. Dissecting the submucosa in the second pocket. The further the submucosa dissection becomes from the inner canal, the less number of blood vessels become. Therefore, submucosa dissection becomes easier in the proximal area of the region. The second pocket was also connected. Some big vessels require coagulation with hemostatic forces. We could safely cut this area without immediate bleeding. We made the two pockets. Then all we have to do is to dissect the remaining submucosa and mucosa. We encounter a big vessel again. We give a coagulation outside of the blood vessel to make sure coagulation of the vessel. Then we cut the vessel including surrounding submucosa using end cut mode. So we can see the bleeding from the stump of the vessel. Then we add coagulation. We 
pretty completed. Touch my stuff on French and cause a seizure now. We are dissecting the remaining submucosa, which we intentionally left. Airline injection, so flash net is useful. There is a little remaining submucosa, so we will finish soon. Now all we have to do is just dissecting the remaining submucosa. We are surely approaching to the victory. Final dissection. We did it. Please look at this. What a beautiful post ESD mucosal defect. There are no any damages of the muscularis. This is a resected specimen. As you can see, it's a cylindrical one. Opening a specimen with cutting the gap of normal mucosa and pinned. It's much bigger than 10 cm. This is the resected specimen, 12 cm in the longer diameter. Envelope resection has been achieved. Thank you. Bye. 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 Wow, that was very impressive. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, gosh, um, so uh, before we get into the cases and the technique, uh, Professor Yamamoto, could you explain to me why did you come up with this pocket creation? Because as far as I know, you are a very skilled endoscopist. You can do ESD in duodenum with needle knife. So for you, everything is possible. So why did you come up with this technique? Uh, because I I think the uh, the dissection dissection part is more important than the mucosal incision. That is because the uh, tumor invasion to the submucosal tissue uh, makes the risk of lymph node metastasis higher. So the uh, the vertical margin is very important. And uh, visual dissection under the direct, direct visualization, and that makes the procedure much more stable, uh, recognizing blood vessels and the coagulate before uh, cutting. Then you can prevent bleeding. Once you make ble bleeding in the submucosal tissue, then the submucosal tissue is stained red. Then you don't know where you are cutting. Then cut another blood vessels, and then uh, dissection plane becomes uh, uh, unstable. Sometimes go to too too shallow to uh, cut the mucosa tumor itself, or cut the muscle layer. So very unstable. So I want to uh, make the dissection as stable as possible. So then um, I started using the 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 ST hood to go into the submucosal space and stable the dissection. And uh, I prioritize the dissection uh, to the, the mucosal incision. That makes the, uh, pr the technique pocket creation method. Ah, okay, I get it. So basically it's about making it safe and also providing better quality specimen. Yes, exactly. Everywhere. Yes, ah, okay. exactly. So, it's uh, overall, it's best for the patient because then we get accurate histology and a very safe procedure. Right. Okay. <laughs> and at the same time, it is used for uh, challenging cases as well, like uh, fibrosis. So there, if there is a fibrosis, then the, uh, the creation of two pockets, both sides of the fibrosis, then you can see that the uh, dissection plane, both sides. So just connect the 
plane, right and left, then uh, you can dissect the fibrosis um, safely. So they, uh, we can overcome the, the uh, difficult situation using the pocket creation method. Excellent. So I was going to ask Dr. Hayashi if he uses pocket creation for all his cases now, or you use pocket sometimes and conventional sometimes. Uh, what do you do, Dr. Hayashi, in your practice? Uh, thank you for asking me. So uh, for mother, so the beginning, the when uh, beginning of the uh, performing pocket creation method, uh, we might choose cases which will be good for pocket creation method. Though eventually we realized pocket creation method is good for almost all or yes, correct or ESDs. Then uh, eventually the, the technique became a standard, standard ESD technique among us now. So we okay. use pocket creation method for all the cases, all the cases. <laughs> <laughs> that is the first choice for us. So now pocket creation is the technique of choice for everything yes. in colorectum. Right. Yes. Okay. So is there any area where pocket creation is not good or can be dangerous or counterproductive? Is there any situation like that? Hmm. Can I answer? Could yeah, I answer? Please. Yes. So uh, as far as I uh, experienced colorectal ESD, I can't find any place which are not good for uh, pocket creation method. Of course, uh, some colorectal regions can be dissected uh, with conventional technique uh, as easy as pocket creation method. Though if you uh, obtain skill of pocket creation method, you can uh, you can manage or almost all or correct regions uh, without difficulties. Okay, so what you're saying basically is that there is no situation where pocket creation doesn't work. It works everywhere in colorectal. Yes, That's yes, good. That's yes. Good. Just for a small regions, just uh, under underwater EMR, uh, but uh, when we choose ESD. Uh, we yeah. choose pocket creation method all the time. Okay, that sounds very good. So one of the other confusion in the West is about pocket creation versus tunneling technique. Do you think they are the same or uh, there's any difference? <laughs> very similar. Uh, actually, I, start, I, I studied this technique with the name of tunneling method, actually, yeah. but um, uh, the, the name of tunneling sounds like uh, creating a narrow tunnel from the entrance to the, uh, the other. Uh, so the just uh, narrow tunneling is not the purpose of this technique. I want, I want to uh, dissect the submucosa under the lesion with a stable condition. So the wider dissection in the submucosal tissue, and uh, that pocket creation is better word to um, to name to um, yeah uh, me, me, uh, and okay. indicate that technique. Okay, so it's a very wide tunnel. In pocket, you make a very wide tunnel. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yes. So just I, I changed the name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but in pocket creation. Do you always open the pocket on the far side, on the sequel side, or no. you don't always open? No. Uh, uh, sometimes I just open the pocket from the uh, inner side in the colon. That means the, the uh, near side uh, yeah. to you. And then I just open from the one side to the, uh, the, uh, the oral side and then uh, open the other side without connecting to, to the oral side. But sometimes uh, connecting the oral side and uh, making the pocket to the uh, tunnel is easier. So whichever uh, the technique is easier, I choose. Oh, okay. So there's no big uh, disadvantage of opening it or not opening it. There's right. no big difference, okay. 
Though I, 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 I uh, recently we realized some novice endoscopists were struggling to open the pocket. Then, uh, as far as uh, so as I lectured, uh, we came up came up with uh, additional technique: pocket creation method with single clip traction. In that uh, in the procedure, we made circumferential mucosal incision after creation of the pocket, then provide a uh, reopenable clip, single reopenable clip uh, to, grasp, to grasp the uh, partially resected uh, uh, distal side of the partially resected specimen. Then we connect it to the opposite wall to probe to, uh, to, to, to open the dissected area and uh, make us see good visibility of the submucosa and uh, which facilitates opening the pocket much easier than conventional PCM. That is a combination of uh, traction method and the pocket creation method. Yeah, and that's one, one of the traction method is just a simple uh, one clip traction, single clip traction. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I can see the logic in it because sometimes after creating a pocket or a tunnel, the dissection of the remaining submucosa can be challenging. Right, and right, yeah, exactly. Good. Yes. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> the attraction is very uh, useful, but uh, in a proximal normal colon, uh, you don't want to withdraw the scope and re-insert uh, the scope, just a, just a single clip. You just yeah. insert the clip device through the accessory channel and, um, and apply a traction easily. So that is the single clip traction method. Yeah, and the moreover, the single clip is much cheaper than <laughs> up to date <laughs> traction devices. It's cost only 20 US dollars. <laughs> and the tension of the traction can be uh, controlled by the amount of the insufflation. So suck the air, and then the, the wall comes to close to the, uh, the, the specimen and just insufflate, then traction works. Yeah. Well, so that's a very important point you made. I was going to say that I've observed that sometimes using these techniques, people can use too much traction, which causes problem. And then they right. forget to realize where the muscle, where it's some mucosa. So, it's a very important point to be able to control the amount of traction. Just yes. yes. Yeah. So the amount of the insufflation should be controlled carefully. That's very, very, very important. The other thing I noticed uh, was that in your case that you should beautifully demonstrated a circumferential polyp being removed in the rectum, you kept the muscle always at the top and some mucosa below. Uh, is well, that normal? This is what you do in, uh, in rectum or is that what you do everywhere? No, no. Uh, whichever the, the control of the endoscope is easier. Um, I usually place the, the lesion at six o'clock, uh, the di different direction. But uh, in that case, it was easier to dissect uh, uh, yeah. locating the lesion uh, at 12 o'clock. And using the ST hood, the, the knife comes to the center of the narrow uh, opening of the hood. So even the, if the, the lesion is located at 12 o'clock, you can still um, uh, select the dissection plane uh, close to the muscle layer, and you can choose the dissection plane. That's, that's uh, I agree completely because uh, although six o'clock is the preferred position, but every case is different and we can choose depending yes. on the access and difficulty. The other- Therefore, more, we don't stick to rotate region, any region to the six o'clock position. We can dissect any, any directions with using ST hood. Yeah, ST hood is very useful for that yeah. purpose. I think well. <laughs> ST hood is specially designed for pockets and tunnels, just makes it so much better for that. I yes, think. and uh, uh, in the pocket, the, the visual field is uh, uh, all around the, uh, the uh, endoscopic view. Um, that because the, 
the tissue touch the hood. So the, the, the hood becomes totally transparent. Yeah. In the yeah, air. Right, capsule endoscopy. Yeah, just the opening is the visual field, but in the pocket, you can see everywhere. Yeah, no, that's, that's a beautiful uh, idea, I, I agree. I have noticed it, but didn't realize it. Now it clicks to me, why, okay. Uh, one other new thing that I noticed is that uh, for when you encounter vessels, you change to spray coagulation one and eight. Yes. Some people use force coagulation one and 10. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the difference between the two or it doesn't really matter? Doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very similar. The, yeah. the concept is very similar. Uh, the uh, soft coagulation works with the uh, coagulation forceps, but uh, with the knife, tip of the knife, soft coagulation doesn't work because the tip of the knife is uh, too small and the contacting area is too narrow. So the only 200 volts doesn't work. So the, uh, I wanted to use a higher voltage, but with a lower wattage and control the energy uh, not to burn and just, uh, just uh, uh, coagulate without cutting the blood vessels. Okay, I, I get it. So I think the concept is pre-coagulate the vessel with either spray or force at a low watt. Yes, yes. Then you can use the knife as a coagulation forceps. Yes, no. and that speeds up things. Uh, now, uh, I saw the hyaluronic acid injection you just did at the beginning and that's it. After that, you did not need hyaluronic acid. Is that right? No. Uh, um, whenever the, uh, the submucosal cushion is not uh, good enough, then I use hyaluronic acid. And if you can get a good cushion with just saline, I use the saline injection through the flash knife. So, but uh, uh, I use hyaluronic acid anytime when I'm not comfortable with the thick thickness of the submucosal tissue. Okay, I, I get it. So um, I think maybe we're running out of time, but I wanted to ask you one last question about uh, some of the cases in sigmoid, large sigmoid polyp with a big nodule, I've encountered situations of muscle retraction sign. Yes, yes. And I sometimes don't know this is muscle retraction or this is uh, a cancer invading into the muscle. Uh, so can you explain to me the difference between the two for an endoscopist, how to differentiate the two and how to manage that? So okay. it's so easy to distinguish yeah, uh, submucosal fibrosis induced by prolapsing of the big nodule or uh, cancer invasion. Though, uh, as far as uh, so as far as we experience um, the uh, benign submucosal fibrosis, which produce uh, muscle retraction, uh, doesn't have any uh, micro vessels in the fibrotic, fibrotic submucosa and around the areas. And uh, so uh, when, we, when we inject sodium hyaluronate into the fibrotic area, uh, if the area is benign worm, uh, we can obtain uh, a little elevation uh, without damaging tumor vessels. So, uh, unless uh, encountering uh, tumor vessels or uh, such uh, such findings, uh, we may we probably uh, overcome the fibrotic area with the fibrotic area uh, related to muscle retraction. So uh, when we inject so inject something into the area. Uh, then we can't we can't avoid uh, sticking big vessels, or uh, we see uh, invaded tumor tissue. 
uh, we had better discontinue the procedure because even if we dissect a region uh, 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 with our resection, the pathological result will not show uh, curative ones. Yeah, yeah but I sometimes think. distinction is very difficult sometimes. So the final, finally, we have to confirm that by uh, pathological examination after resecting the um, tumor. But uh, basically, the, 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 uh, uh, the non-elevating area is if, the, if that is wide and a lot of blood vessels, then and the tumor, uh, then uh, it has a high risk of uh, tumor invasion. Uh. So, yeah, if the if wide area and a lot of blood vessels, then it's too risky and then, uh, probably that's a uh, tumor invasion. So you should stop that. Yeah, that's it. Again, pocket creation will be a very good technique for areas with muscle retraction. Yes. Yeah, it's the best way. <laughs> yes, that, that's because the not only uh, the traction of the tumor, the, using the uh, the ST hood, you can apply traction and counter traction both sides, the yeah. the specimen side and the mus uh, muscle side, and open it, and so the uh, fibrosis can be overcome. Yeah, even narrow fibrotic area, fibr fibrotic submucosa can be stretched. Yeah, Perfect. very precise control of the knife is possible. Yeah, and uh, so uh, actually, even hand speak ultrasound cannot predict uh, tumor invasion uh, beforehand. Though we recently switch uh, switch from sticking 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 to predicting uh, some cause of invasion, we recent we don't hesitate to try to. Uh, create uh, performing submucosal endoscopy if the region has tumor in invasion or not. Even if we encountered tumor invasion into submucosal, uh, submucosa or deeply wrong, uh, so, uh, so, so all we have to do is just withdrawing the endoscope and close the entrance of the potate and send patient to the surgery. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. About, one of the beauties of pocket creation is if you have a complication or you encounter a difficult area, you come out of the pocket, close the entry point of the pocket. Exactly. The that is yes. easy, easy withdrawing. Uh, uh, I, I, I it doesn't do anything, just close it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's beautiful because uh, I think it's very important for people uh, who are beginning to know the advantage of this technique, that it's so easy to bail out of difficult situations uh, in this way. So my final question uh, would be that, are you still using uh, norepinephrine in your injecting solution or not anymore? Uh, we are still using a little bit of um, ad adrenaline. Oh, good. Uh, I don't know if it's really necessary or not, just uh, still using. Uh, how about you? Do, do you use or not? Uh, I, I, I know that a lot of people say it's not necessary. I still use because uh, it makes me feel good. It is, the feel is a <laughs> little bit uh, dry, a uh, bit blanched. So I think, and I see less vessels. That yeah, brings right. my anxiety level down. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I think maybe it makes no difference to patient, but it does make a difference to my anxiety level. So that's why I use it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, excellent. we are still using it. <laughs> it's been a fascinating session. Uh, I've learned so much this morning that I'm sure our international audience listening to this and watching this will learn a lot more. And this is another big step in acceptability of ESD into far reaches of the world rather than restricting it just to the Eastern world. So thank, thank you. you for your huge contribution in spreading the ESD everywhere. Thanks. Uh, and uh, unless you have any last comments to make, maybe we can draw the session to close. Oh, uh, nothing to add. <laughs> yeah.
I don't Thank have any additional moderations. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy your moderation. Yeah, very uh, good. This session. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, see you in person very soon. Yes, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> see you. Hopefully. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. bye.